Good afternoon. Today I'm up in Scotland at the studio of Doug Fitch and Hannah McAndrew. They've been busy assembling pots for their online exhibition which opens on the 28th. The finest pieces out of recent firings have all been gathered together and I'm here to give you a sneak preview of these pots. In the exhibition are a lot of plates made by Hannah McAndrew, all decorated, some with birds, some with floral imagery. I've selected three to show you. There are about 18 of these small side plates made by Hannah McAndrew, all decorated differently, some with birds, some with floral motifs. They've got a great decorative appeal, but they're also a practical item. This one here has got fantastic detailed and fluid decoration. Hannah's speciality is slip trailing. It uses black slip and red slip and green slip with the honey glaze over the top. Gives a very rich surface. Delightful piece. It's no surprise to find included in this exhibition several large charges made by Hannah McAndrew. They are something of a speciality of hers. I think, like lots of potters, she enjoys this huge surface area on which to trail her various images that allow the surface to become integrated with the pattern. In other words, the glaze itself plays a role in making this piece come alive. The decoration is fluidly trailed, filled in inside these leaves with green slip, and a lot of background is left in order to allow that rich yellow honey glaze to show through. What a splendid piece. I'm sure this will be snapped up. This fantastic charger by Hannah McAndrew with the owl and oak leaf motif is made by pressing the clay onto a mould producing this huge flat rimmed shape that's covered in black slip. The black slip works with the glaze and the wood firing to produce a dense rich surface all around the edge here that you can see. I hope the camera can pick some of it up. And on the back of the piece, if I turn it over, Hannah signed it. And look at the colours that the kiln has produced on this red clay. This is a great example of a press moulded dish made by Doug Fitch. It uses the technique of decorating a flat sheet of clay, letting the Decor the slip decoration stiffen up and then pressing it onto a mould and you can see the way the pattern moves around the shape. You couldn't have done that on the shape itself without getting into difficulties with the pattern making. On the back of the piece, Doug signed it and you can see it's been glazed all over in this case, leaving four small areas for it to stand in the kiln. These pieces were made from a mould that Michael Cardew originally used. It's nice to see that tradition being continued with another potter. What a splendid example of a full-bellied jug made by Doug Fitch this is. It's a very large pot. It's covered in applied decoration, these strips of clay crisscrossing and creating patterns on the pot, but also areas for the glaze to pool, for the colours to change. As we turn the pot around, you can see it changes. Making a pot like this is not just a physical challenge, but it's a time-consuming one, and such a risk when you place a pot like this in the kiln and wood-fire it, because there's no guarantee that it's going to come out at all, and there's no guarantee that it's come, going to come out well, but this one really has done, and so it's a very special piece indeed. I'm sure it will find a really good one quickly. A particularly interesting group of pots are these little jugs that Hannah's made in sequence. I love it how when a potter makes a series of things, they're able to work on them each differently to produce individual pots. And yet they've all started out as more or less the same. They've got different decorations on, but the way the handles are treated and the lips and the slight changes to the belly of the pots make a fantastic individuality to each of these particular pieces. <coughs> I've picked out this particular example of a jug by Hannah McAndrew, very, very special piece, partially because it's a fantastic example of the way the glaze and the fire animate the object. 
the background white slip has had black slip trailed onto it and during the firing the black slip has bled down. It brings together the pattern extremely well but also animates the entire pot. It comes alive. If we look round the other side of the piece the pattern fluidly encompasses the base of the handle and the detail that she brings onto that. This is a superb piece. I'm sure it will look fantastic in somebody's home. Here's a lily pot made by Doug. It's got a scraffito decoration, the white slit has been put all over the red clay and then a tool used to draw patterns into the surface. These patterns influenced by the nature that's all around him. The surface of the pot is coated in a yellow honey glaze with some green glaze used to highlight it. You take the lid off this and you'll see that the inside of the lid is unglazed. This was a traditional uh, way of keeping the contents dry because there's a slight absorbency to the clay. I like that you can get your hand in here and pull your cookies out and uh, it's always a nice surprise to fish around in there and see what's been left from the last person. These are splendid pots. Remarkably good examples of the slipware potter's art. This bowl by Doug Fitch is a fantastic example of the way that the kiln and firing enliven a piece. It's an orchestration of black slip allowed to dry, a white slip placed over it, and then some of the slip wiped away with a tool or finger. The slip with the glaze on in the firing changes colours and we get all this streaking going on on the inside. On the outside it's very very lively piece and the contrast between the red clay and the pattern that appears on the outside is remarkably interesting. He's got his stamp as usual in the middle of the pot. What a fine piece, a fine piece to use, a fine piece to enjoy. Doug likes to make versions of traditional items like these money boxes. When you're firing Doug's kiln you're, there are trees all around and in the trees live rooks and you're really aware of the noise these birds make whilst you're firing. They seem to accompany the pottery. And here he's made a money box with some branches and it's covered in rooks, all pointing in different directions. You can see the motifs on the outside not only have broken up the surface, but they've helped the glaze to try and make different patterns as it flows down between those motifs. A wonderful thing to have and used to put your money in. As usual, there's a whole selection of mugs made by Hannah, made and decorated by Hannah McAndrew. In some ways, they're a vehicle for decoration, but they're also a lovely item just to use every day. I have a whole selection of these, and I enjoy picking which one I want to drink out of at different times of day. This lightly coloured one carries the decoration very strongly, very vividly. The green filling infill with the trailing and the very pale background slip. Whereas this one, this one's got really hot in the kiln and the colours are quite dark and sombre. Perhaps a mug for the evening. And this particularly well fired example has captured the very delicate mark making that's a part of that slip trailing process that comes alive with the glaze. Some more mugs of Hannah's, this time a slightly different shape, full bellied, not too full so that when you're drinking you can empty the contents without having to tip the mug too far up. I love the way that the slight belly allows you to cut the warm contents whilst you're drinking, a very pleasant experience. As usual, each one has a different decoration, making it a unique form. Lovely, lovely group. I'm sure these will go very quickly. Here are three cups made by Doug, this time without handles. This one has a trailed line. The pale colour trail slip allows the glaze to run down, make a streak, making a streaky surface. This one's got an impressed stamp decoration. And this one has had white slip put on top of the black slip and finger wiped through. Each time one of these pieces is made by Doug, it's a unique pot. He doesn't make them as a series all the same, they're all slightly different. A beautiful way to begin acquiring his pots. 
the inspiration for many of Doug's pots and many potters are medieval English jugs and this piece unashamedly explores that genre. The piece in this case, a tapering jug, is covered in dense applied decoration. This is far more applied decoration than you would find on most medieval pots. Doug really enjoys this very slow process of applying pellets of clay and strips of clay in order to build up a pattern. And I think part of the reason why he enjoys it so much is because it's transformed in the kiln. The glaze catches on these upper surfaces and runs off, producing a darker surface at that particular point. And then below, the glaze runs down, creating streaks and marks which animate the piece. A very, very splendid jug. As usual, great to hold, pick up in the hand. This is a particularly fine example of a Doug Fitch jug. He makes many, many jugs. It's his passion. And, uh, and the big fluid form allows this patterning, this mark making, to really enliven the jug. He uses his finger to draw these panels into which he can scraffito patterns, patterns inspired by nature that's all around him. The tradition of jug making from all over England, but particularly from Devon, intrigues him. And he it seems to me he's continuing that tradition in a modern idiom. What a splendid piece this is. When potters work together, it's unsurprising to find them having got collaborating. And in this case, we've got a very splendid jug. It's a collaboration between Hannah McAndrew and Doug Fitch. Doug throwing the pot, I think making the pot slightly smoother in form to enable Hannah to do her intricate and rather delicate decoration. Very, very different from Doug's decoration. And when we see the two coming together, we get something that's greater than the sum of the parts. A fabulous piece. I love the way the decoration moves up into the neck and then uses this band to tie it together, the aglow sitting in the oak tree. Well, I hope you've enjoyed looking at a sneak preview of these pots and we're going to end today's little film with Doug and Hannah's best collaboration to date.